This isn't a story about hate. It's a story about love. In the last five years, we've witnessed violence in Syria, South Sudan, Ukraine, Central African Republic, Yemen, and a score of other nations. A few of more than the 80 countries we've worked in, without fear or favor for more than 150 years. In that time, we've garnered three Nobel Peace Prizes, more than any other organization in history. But this comes with losses. Every year we see colleagues caught up in the crossfire, sometimes killed or kidnapped. Amidst some of the harshest conflicts on earth, we assist with the basics of life. Water, food, shelter. We work with communities to repair central infrastructure, like roads and water systems. We support people to support themselves through small businesses and loans. And we send war surgeons, nurses and doctors to where they're most needed. We do get postage all over. Here in, in South Sudan, it's in civil war and the, the systems are quite broken down so there's not enough resources to care for the many people who are victims of violence and injuries. So ICRC work here is trying to mitigate that. Today, 65 million people are fleeing conflict, more than any other time in history. For those on the move, we support them on the journey where we can. But for those who don't want to leave their homes, or can't, they remain stuck in besieged cities. Through preference or circumstance, the conditions they face can be dire. Our home was destroyed in the shelling. We have absolutely nothing. We try to reach people stranded in conflicts and make sure they have what they need. The Red Cross and Red Crescent Network spans 190 countries. Through this global reach, we help families find those they've lost in the chaos of war. Once we realized that children had no family members with them at all, we collected all the information they could give us about their families. We used the pictures of the children, we used the names of the children and the names of their family members, and this is how we managed to locate their parents, their siblings and their grandparents. Again and again, we connect brothers and sisters, fathers and mothers. <laughs> When the circumstances aren't so fortunate, our forensic experts work to bring closure and the opportunity for a dignified burial. We care for victims of sexual violence and work to prevent such crimes. Men are burying their heads in the sand, saying it's a woman's problem. That's why we volunteers are going to keep working so that one day everyone will understand what rape is. Throughout the world, we work to help the most vulnerable people and those who may be overlooked. We care that detainees are treated humanely, no matter what they've done, visiting a million detainees in almost a hundred countries. There are 23 inmates in our cell with two people in some beds. There are even more people sleeping on the floor. From the diplomatic level to the front line, we remind fighters on all sides that wars have limits. Named in the Geneva Conventions as an authority on the laws of war, we work to regulate the use of weapons, the methods of warfare, and to ensure civilians are spared. No matter who they are or what side they're on, we treat the sick and wounded. Being an organization which is very neutral and impartial, that's what we do. So it's, it's spontaneous. You don't even have to think about it. Anybody comes with emergence, you take them in, no question. And in the wake of war, when weapons, bombs and mines are abandoned, 
we clean up what we can and help those whose lives have been changed by war regain their independence. Often first on the ground and the last to leave. Neutral, impartial and independent. We are the International Committee of the Red Cross.